We'll be asking as well if uh, vegan food producers should be banned from using the term steak, mince and uh, others when describing food that doesn't contain meat. We'll also hear from pub owners ahead of Level 5 lockdown, which goes into force tonight. And I'll be joining uh, John G. O'Dwyer for the first in our series of walks and uh, talks. So all of that and lots and lots more on the way. We have lovely uh, competition for you this week as well. Um, Not all of us have time to uh, cook the uh, traditional meal. But um, uh, if, if you're in that uh, situation, we might be able to help you out because our friends at uh, dinnersready.ie, they've given us a seven-day meal hamper to give away every day this week. And you can have a look at their website for their menus to see what's available. And uh, there the can be a delivery indeed to your door at the click of a button. Now, to get involved in a competition, all you have to do is text Dinners Ready, followed by your name and your address to 083 Double one. That's 83 311 You can email us at any time at all on tip today at tipfm.com. Now, steak, burgers, and sausages should only be described as such if they contain meat. Now, the Irish Farmers Association's uh, urging MEPs to ban vegan products from containing these words as it claims plant based food is deliberately disguised as something that it's not. Now, the European Parliament is voting this week on the wording used uh, for meat and dairy substitutes. The IFA also wants an end to milk, cheese and butter descriptions on products if they don't exclusively contain dairy. Uh, Tipperary farmer Tim Cullinan is president of the IFA and he joins me now. Good morning to you, Tim. Good morning, Fran. Um, tell me about this, Tim. I mean, why is this uh, wording uh, so important? Yeah, I suppose, look, you described it very well yourself, Fran. There's, there's a vote this week and there's two amendments. And the first one is on the wording of uh, steak, sausages, burgers and hamburgers. And look, for generations, that is describing meat that farmers are producing. And by calling... Um, having vegan vegan steaks or sausages or whatever, like, that's totally misleading. It's misleading the consumer. And on the other one, then, the Second Amendment is on dairy products, you know, milk, cheese, yogurt, butter, and, and whey products. Like, those those names are for exclusively for products that are you know, either dairy products or meat products. And if vegans, look, if they want to have uh, burgers or... They can't use the word burger. Do you know what I mean? If they want to promote their own products, well, then they need to develop their own name. These are names that have been there for generations, household names. And, you know, what Mm. what this is going to do is lead to confusion and it's misleading the consumer, and that is wrong. And, look, we have no agenda or no issue with, with consumers if they want to buy vegan products, that's fine. And they're properly labeled within the retailer. But when you have a scenario here now... What's trying to be done here is mislead the consumer. That is wrong, and so we're totally opposed to it. So there is two amendments. Yeah, it's, 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 very str- it's very strong language, uh, uh, Tim, to be saying, you know, deliberately misleading the con- uh, consumer. Yeah, which are, which are that's what it is, Fran. I mean, as long as we're all going into a butcher shop or going into a supermarket, we if we if we say we're going to... If, if a housewife says she's going in to buy a steak, well, then we all believe it's steak, you know, it, it, it's beef steak that she's buying and same with sausages that it, it's a pork product or mm. on the dairy side, if you're going in to buy milk, so that you buy milk or cheese or whatever, that they are dairy products and like, so having vegans using those names as well you know, is wrong, mm. it's misleading and um, so I sincerely hope that MEPs will, will get this vote through on, on these two amendments in, in the Parliament this week, well, but, uh, you see- it'll bring clarity to, to to the thing. All right, stay with me for a moment, Tim, because we're joined by another temporary person, indeed, Sandra Higgins, and Sandra is director of the Go Vegan uh, World. Uh, good morning to you, Sandra. Good morning, Fran. You're deliberately misleading consumers out there, Sandra. What, what do you have to say to that? Well, we would say that the most misleading products on the market are animal products. And the length to which the industry goes to hide their practices, to influence the science and to dispute the science on the terrible effects of animal agriculture show that they are misleading. And they don't have a monopoly on these words. 
you know, the, the, the history of plant-based substitutes for animal flesh, eggs and dairy is thousands of years old. In, in fact, it dates from hundreds of years B.C., so they, they don't have a monopoly on it. Hmm. And if you think of terms like uh, coconut flesh, coconut milk, peanut butter, uh, cleansing milk, you, you, they, they do not have a monopoly on these terms. And this is the bullying hand of the industry. Tim, what about that? The bullying hand of uh, the industry, you don't have a monopoly on that. And in fact, you're misleading consumers with your own products. What, what, what about that? No, look, um what we have here is, so as I described already, like the on, on the meat ones, you take your steak, your sausages and your burgers. Like for generations, and, and Sandra is right, it goes back to for thousands of years. It is what has described meat products derived from animals. And I don't, look, I, I don't agree with uh, the comment on, on the care and the animal welfare of animals. No better than farmers to take care and look after their animals in a animal welfare manner and so what we have here is, is meat that is derived from animals out in the field grazing grass and particularly here in Europe it's the most natural way you can produce meat and on the other side on the dairy side we have the most efficient way and welfare way of producing dairy products particularly here in Ireland you know, where the cows are grazing in the field for the majority of the year and absolutely those names have been associated with milk is what comes from a cow or comes from a mammal and you know, and the other products are derived from that then the cheese, the yogurts and the butters and you know, that's our view on it and you know, it, it is very clear that if you're getting plant based products and calling them milk as well that is, that is not correct, it is misleading and you know, that, that, that's my view on so, it. Sa- Sandra, I something I could never fully understand was that, I mean, even, even there with what you said about the, the animal products uh, uh, from, from the farming point of view, um, why would vegans even want to be associated with burgers or steaks, or you know, because it's totally against your ethos? Uh, you know, that's a point that actually some vegans would make. A lot of vegans find these products distasteful. Mm. But they, they do have a history thousands of years old. So just to be clear, Tim, I, mm. I, I wasn't talking about animal products having a history of using these terms that is thousands of years old. I was talking about the human history of making mock meat from wheat gluten and using plant, plant milks, which are recognised in every culture worldwide for thousands of years. But to answer your question, Fran, we've grown up in a speciesist culture where the animal agriculture cultural industry has had an unfair and undue influence on our consumer habits. And as a result, most of us were not reared vegan. We weren't reared on a plant-based diet. We were reared eating these products. And we don't omit them from our lives because we don't like the taste of them. We omit them because they're unjust. It's wrong to turn the life of an animal into an object or a commodity or a means of profit. I mean, if you think of the term milking it, it's a very derogatory term that refers to taking advantage of somebody else for the, for the purposes of illicit profit. It's no coincidence that that term derived from the dairy industry. This is what we do to cows. And as Tim said, they are mammals, the same as humans. The milk they produce is not for human consumption. It's for their own babies. And they never get a chance to feed their babies because they're separated from them at birth. So the the reason that people consume animal products is that they are encouraged to believe that they're natural, normal, necessary and nice. And they're All those terms are untrue. And if listeners want to look at the evidence, I'd encourage them to go to our website, goveganworld.com. Yeah, the only thing, as a a meat eater myself, I I, I have to say, Sandra, that I I realise, and I go along with some of what you're saying, in that we we like to put it out of our mind, of course, how the animals are slaughtered in one thing and and another. But, I mean, we've always, human beings have always eaten meat. No, no, we we haven't actually. We only started to hunt about, 50,000 years ago and we only domesticated other animals 10,000 years ago so we didn't always eat other animals but even if we did there are lots of things we've always done history doesn't make an unjust practice just 
Absolutely. And of course, we do. Studies have shown the processes that our minds go through to hide from our own conscious awareness the unfair act of killing an animal for a product that we don't need. All right, Tim, can I bring you back in on on, on that? Are you becoming fearful of of vegans because of the popularity of it? Is that why you're pushing this this agenda, Tim? We're we're not fearful of anybody, Fran and and Joe. We will always stand over the produce we Mm. produce and then the manner and the way it is produced, and I will stand over that forever and a day. What, where we have concern here is that this confusion here that the, the names derived from meat products is being used now to sell products derived from, from plant-based. And it's working, plant-based. obviously, because that's that, why that you're concerned. That, well, that, that, sorry, that is the differential. And, you know, Sandra's trying to change the argument here to, to about the process of producing animals and, and the way they're looked after and the manner in which they're looked after. No, I'm not, so Tim, I don't, at you, all. Yes, Sandra, just, just one sec, Sandra, Sandra. I'll come back to you in a sec. Yes, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Sandra, that's, that's, this, that's the, the, the narrative that you're trying to bring this down. And our narrative is very, very clear here that there's, there's a, an amendment going through the European Parliament later this week, and it's just to bring clarity. And I have absolutely no problem if an individual decides they don't want to eat meat, they don't want to um, buy dairy products, that's fine. But all I'm saying here is I want to be able to clearly distinguish what is derived from uh, meat that's derived from animals and and dairy products that's derived from from, from Mm. milking cows and and what's derived from from plant-based products. That's that's what we want to do here. Just bring certainty to it. Right. And Fran, it's about allowing the consumer to be able to make right. the Sandra, that that's, that seems want to that seems reasonable enough, Sandra. That the consumer has all of the information, and it's up to them how they decide. Then, well, actually, the European Alliance for Plant-Based Foods has shown that the proposed change, the proposed ban, actually violates consumer protection law. Look, we're in the middle of a lockdown from a pandemic that's directly related to our use of other animals. We're facing the biggest crisis the humankind has ever faced because of the climate catastrophe and the destruction of the very environment that we all depend on to produce food, the very environment that these same farmers depend on to produce food. It's again, highly significantly contributed to by the animal agricultural industry. And here we are arguing about these terms, mm. it, you know, it contravenes... But it does it seem is. ironic <laughs> that vegans want to use these terms, and I, it's always baffled me, to be honest with well, you, Well, it's convenience, you know? Frank, beca- uh, Fran, yeah. because if you went vegan in the morning, mm-hmm. what you would do is look for convenient replacements for what you already eat. Now, when I went vegan, I didn't use any of these. They weren't on the market. But most people now find this a very easy way to change. We have right. to change from an environmental perspective. And I know the farmers feel threatened, but I would appeal to them. The future of farming has to be plant-based. We know that this. This is the science. Well, you I'm, sure, they, uh, yes, I'm, I'm sure, sure, sure they would disagree with that. Yes, Tim. What, what, Friends, yeah. The point I want to make yeah. here, and, and it's, it's, it's very important, mm-hmm. like to be blaming farmers for a, pande- a worldwide pandemic that started in wet market in China that's not the process that we're involved in mm. and there's one thing here we have to remember and uh, the government uh, Tony Houlihan and the HSE and everybody acknowledges that farming is a frontline service right through this pandemic and what is critically important here is that we have can continue to produce good quality wholesome food during this pandemic because we're in a war here we're all fighting a war here together we're facing into a shutdown again this evening and what is critically important in all of this is that far- our consumers are able to continue to to have a plentiful supply of good nutritious food and that is very important as well is keeping up people's immune system during this very difficult time all for right. not just our country. All right, Tim. Sandra, can I give you the last word briefly, if you would, on, on, on this, yeah, Sandra? During the, during the lockdown, only essential services should be open. And the science is that a, a 100% plant diet without any animal products is nutritionally adequate and confers health benefits and is environmentally sustainable. We don't need animal right. products in our diet and we shouldn't be producing them. And I hope that MEPs will do their research 
and think outside the box and vote against this ban. All right, there we must leave it. And thank you uh, both. That was Sandra Higgins there. Sandra is direct, er, director of uh, Go Vegan Ireland and, of, of course, uh, Tim Cullinan. Uh, of the IFA. How do you feel about that? 1800 938 007. The text and WhatsApp 083 311 